Hi, I'm Liz. Ooh, and this is, okay, I'll roll with this. <laughs> I'm Liz, and for the past year, I've been studying the lives of K-12 teachers in North Carolina, my home state, which just a couple months ago was ranked 51st out of 50 states, including DC, as the worst state for teachers to teach in, based on class sizes, um, salaries, and a few 18 other metrics. And it didn't take me long at all to realize something very important. Teaching is incredibly, incredibly hard. Teachers work really long hours on and off the clock. They don't make a lot of money, and if anything goes wrong in the school, it's always the teacher to blame first. On top of that, teachers are greatly outnumbered, normally 25 to 30 students to one teacher per classroom. And teachers spend all of their days stuck in the same four walls, sometimes not even getting a chance to take a bathroom break. But a lot of people are starting to look at education, which is exciting. 55% um, increase in the past year in ed tech funding. But not everything can be solved by technology alone. Like when a teacher is stuck in a classroom and never has a chance to get to meet the teacher in the classroom next to her, that's not a technology problem, that's a human problem. And over half of all teachers are leaving the profession within the first three years. So experts have been trying to figure out how to create stability for our teachers, which is a formula that looks something like this. Um, a wide variety of support and skill management. And they found out that that can be done very easily through the use of mentors. So if you provide teachers with a mentor program when they come in, they can kind of get all of those things from the first equation. This actually has a lot of benefits for both sides of the mentorship relationship. New teachers are extremely tech savvy. Um, they have all the new cutting edge practices in education. And veteran teachers have years and years of experience under their belts and have figured out the work-life balance a little bit more. Unfortunately, however, um, formal mentorship has a lot of cost for schools and teachers. It involves a lot of extra time commitments. Teachers have to go through rigorous formal assessments and often have weekly meetings and observations. And the school normally has to approve these kinds of things in advance, so it might not even be available until the next year. But what if your teachers need someone to talk to today? Who do they go to? Is it possible that we can create a mentorship program for teachers that provides all of these benefits without exhausting money, time, and ourselves? So I took a look at what teachers don't have, and I tried to figure out what we needed to make. It needs to be something that's efficient, doesn't add time to their lives, is cost-effective or free, and something that's incredibly easy for them to be a part of. So I spent a lot of time looking at time and trying to figure out where mentorship might fit into a teacher's day. And I asked teachers what their day looked like before, during, and after school. Fortunately, schools are living, breathing creatures. And there's not a lot of um, similarity between schools, we'll just put it that way. <laughs> so things are always fluctuating and changing. Meetings pop up, et cetera. However, everybody has to get to and from work at some point. Is it possible that we could build mentorship into our commutes? So that was my next big question. And then I thought, Kids ride to school together on the bus currently. Is it possible that teachers could ride to school together too? If I could get two teachers from separate classrooms into the same car together, would that increase their stability at work? That led me to my first prototype, appropriately named School Bus, where I had two drivers, one of them being my lovely mother, <laughs> and I, had, I matched teachers together based on their location. I had my drivers pick them up, feed them breakfast, give my teachers coffee, and take them to where they needed to go. I ran the prototype here at Newton Conover Middle School um, in North Carolina, top left, with these two lovely ladies, and I gave my drivers magnets for their cars. What I hoped would happen is that my teachers might save a little bit of money on gas, maybe meet someone in their school that they hadn't met previously, feel a little bit more energized when they get into work, and hopefully cut down on their emissions since they're only taking one car. But what happened was a lot more exciting than that. My teachers actually created new friendships, not only with each other, but with my drivers. It, they actually felt prepared when they got to work. My teachers said that they had time to strategize about behavioral issues and deal with classroom issues on the way to work so that they had a little bit of composure before they got there. And then finally, my teachers' families told me that their moms were a lot nicer when they got home because they had time to vent before they got to their kids. And then I found out that this wasn't an isolated series of results. 
and that other experts in the field were getting the same kind of benefits, saying that years that they carpooled were the best years of teaching and of their marriage. This kind of stability and support is important because teaching is an emotional roller coaster. Teachers often come in on a high, um, very excited about the year and excited about the possibilities that it brings. And then when reality hits, they go into survival mode. Um, they're really just trying to get through each day as well as they can. Then they go often into a deep plummet of disillusionment. Why am I teaching in the first place? How will I ever get to these kids? Um, and then luckily after a little bit of break, they come back, feel a little bit more refreshed, are able to reflect on the year, and then move forward with anticipation for the next year. So I invited my teachers over for dinner, as you do in the South, <laughs> and we talked about how to kind of use mentorship to mitigate some of these mood swings. And that's when a teacher told me, you know, this would just be great for my daughter who already wants to change schools. She's a first year teacher at a local elementary school. And that's when I realized what mentorship might do for a teacher. It helps you get through this period of disillusionment where you feel like you might get lost. So we tried to figure out how to take carpooling and make it something that everyone could get access to. And we figured out that if we added a component of phone pooling, then on the days when you can't ride to school with someone, if you have an extra meeting or you're coaching something, then at least you have someone to talk to when you get home. And together we created Beacon, named after North Carolina's lighthouses, as a guide to help you get through that fog of disillusionment. And I ran my second prototype, the carpool challenge, where I tried to get people to carpool for a week together. And that's when I met Tegan and Anne. Tegan is a second year English teacher in Marietta, Georgia. And Anne has been teaching the same subject for 13 years. They met informally through a mutual friend last year and have been carpooling together on and off for the past year. Tegan told me that carpooling was what was helping her get through her first two years of teaching because teaching can seriously be hard. But she also told me that it's so much better when you have someone to sit in traffic with, someone to strategize with, someone to go to the gym with, someone to count on even on rainy days, and someone to call even on the days when you can't go to school together. And that's when I realized that carpooling with another teacher can make a huge difference in their lives. So how can I make that same kind of difference for as many teachers as possible? Tegan, Ann, and I are currently creating a Beacon Toolkit that's an online platform that's free and available for teachers that provides them with all of the things they need to get over the barriers currently keeping them. So it involves pitch decks that they can provide for their administrators or for other teachers, sign-up sheets and activities on how to best match teachers, as well as a few other community building things. And right now, carpooling has had an impact on a very small level through my prototypes in two states. But I think it's something that can benefit every single teacher. However, this stuff spreads by word of mouth, especially when you're in an area where it's so much easier to do something when someone else recommends it to you. So I'm also collecting stories. So if you know any teachers that are currently carpooling, let me know. Thank you so much.